Disclaimer. We are interested in everything and experts in nothing. We enjoy learning, but get it wrong sometimes. We mean no disrespect, and if we mess up, kindly correct us. Let's take this ride together, unless your intention is to cause harm or distress. In which case, with utmost haste, fuck right off. is mine and I am doing the Hatfield McCoy feud. Yes. Now there are a ton of names and dates just like the St. Valentine's Day massacre only less Italian names so hopefully I don't screw it up as bad. That but, would help. You know challenge accepted for my broken <laughs> ass mouth so we'll see what happens. Okay. Um, but here we go. Picture it if you will. The Hatfield-McCoy feud is also described as the Hatfield-McCoy War. Valid. Yeah. Involved two rural families, which, I'm sorry, aside, I hate that word. What? Rural. Rural. Oh my god. You yes. cannot say that word and sound sober. Yeah, it's one of those words that my mouth just does not no. want to form. No. Rural. Rural. It's hard. No, I, I don't like it. You. Just like February. Fuck that. Take the extra R out. It's not needed. Oh, I do the same thing. It's February. Yes. The R's sound silent. Yes. But anyway. So, in rural American families, they were in West Virginia and Kentucky, or the area along the Tug Fork and Big Sandy River, during the years 1863 to 1891. Okay. The Hatfields of West Virginia, so they were on the West Virginia side. Okay. They were led by William Anderson, Devilance. Devilance? Devilance. Uh. Hatfield. And there he is with his bowler hat and majestic beard and tie, apparently. What I is mean, that pin? I think he was a part of the Confederacy. Oh, okay. Because at first I thought it was like a spider or something. <laughs> I swear well, to God. Well, I mean, look at his beard, man. There could be like <laughs> spiders in there. I don't fucking know. His name is Devil Ants. You don't call a nice person Devil Ants. No, that should have been a clue. And I tried to look up what the hell is an ants. Couldn't find it. Cool. So I'm like, all right. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. Mystery number one. And the McCoys of Kentucky, so they're on the Kentucky side. Okay. So we've okay. got West Virginia side, Kentucky side. They're under the leadership of Randolph Old Rannell, which makes sense, McCoy. Rannell. Old Rannell. And look at him. He's so small. Look at his little mustache. Okay. We'll, we'll post it on the website, but I was telling Sarah before we recorded the fact that the one picture I could get to copy of Devil Ants is like 18 sizes bigger than old Randall McCoy. I'm like, y'all can't even stop fighting over size matrix on Wikipedia. <laughs> the fuck? But that's an aside. Well, maybe Tyler might be able to fix it. when he... I think it's funnier this way. <laughs> like, Devil Ants from the grave is, no, fuck you, my picture's gonna be bigger. I'm bigger. <laughs> Alright, so, those involved in the feud were descended from Joseph Hatfield and William McCoy. Now, William McCoy was born in 1750. Okay. So this is... Wow. Yeah, this has been going on for a long time. That's like... Uh, math sucks. 140 years? Mm -hmm. Okay. The feud has entered the American folklore lexicon as a term for any bitterly feuding rival parties. Mm-hmm. Which we can accept that. The first event in the decades-long feud was in 1865, and it was the murder of Randolph's brother, Asa Harmon McCoy, by the Logan... Wildcats, a local militia group that counted Devil Ants and other Hatfields among its members. But it wasn't just Hatfields? No. This was... This is also true... Uh, just, 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 all right, I'll hang with you. Strap it. Uh, all right, here okay. we go. All right. Many people, even members of his own family, regarded Asa Harmon, who had, ser had served in the Union Army during the American Civil War, as a traitor. Oh, so oh, okay. they're in Kentucky, they're in West Virginia. This dude served in the Union, so people in his own family were kind of like, nah, kind of fuck that guy. He's a traitor. Um, so some have surmised that his murder set the stage for the feud. Most historians now see this as an incident, as a standalone event. Gotcha. Because people be dying all the time, plus they didn't really like him all that much. Right. So it was like one of those cousins that they're like, we don't really like him. 
But we sh- technically should be pissed because you don't kill our kin, we kill our kin, <laughs> apparently. But they they just actually consider that to be an isolated incident. So he was really the black sheep. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Now here is the most commonly believed start of the feud. Okay. So the second recorded instance of violence in the feud occurred 13 years later. So we're in 1878. Okay. And it was after a dispute about the ownership of... Of a hog. <laughs> this shit literally started over, over a fucking a pig. pig. <laughs> yes. Well, it's like that movie. Yes. We'll go all the way back. Remember in the Truffle Pig episode, we talked about Nicholas Cage. Yeah, yeah. Pig. pig. It's like that. They're like, fuck you. That's my pig. And I said, maybe it was a Truffle Pig. Maybe that's why you started the fight. But no. No. Mm. I mean, I get it. Back then, livestock a lot of times was primary means of income food yeah super important but seriously a fucking hog yeah well and this it's well 13 years later so we're still at like 130 years of fighting because someone killed a pig no no, we're fighting over who owns the pig oh no it's not a dead pig it's that's my pig no that's my pig oh so continuing on okay Floyd Hatfield, a cousin of Anne's, had the hog. I said perhaps a truffle hog. No, I don't think so. It's Kentucky, not France, but whatever. Okay. But Randolph McCoy claimed it was his, saying that the notches on the pig's ears were McCoy notches, not Hatfield notches. Oh. Did they actually used to do that? They'd notch ears and that's how... Oh. Well, I mean, they it was before branding. Or maybe they didn't brand pigs. I don't know. Maybe yeah. you do that to pigs and not to cattle. I don't know. But, I mean, the poor hog, come on. Yeah. He's already getting his, like, ears slashed at, and now they're fighting over him? That's just rude. It's very rude. But hogs are mean, so he probably deserved That's it. That's true. I don't know. Well, boars are very mean. Yeah. Are all pigs? Not all pigs are mean. Um, not all pigs are mean, but, like, pigs will fucking eat you. That's true. Pigs will fucking eat anything. Like, like a hog? Not a sow. Well, a sow will fucking go after you if you if she thinks that you're messing with her babies. Because well, that's, that's a motherly instinct. Yeah, that's common. But a hog, if it is a big enough hog, it can take your ass down. They're not very nice. I mean, like, everybody sees, like, babe, the cute little yeah. snuffly, and then the cute little piggies at the petting zoo. But pigs are dicks, man. They, they, can, they can kill you. Yeah, well, didn't they... Wasn't it, like, an episode of Bones where they're, like, uh disposing of a body on a pig farm is mm-hmm. the way to go because they'll eat anything. Well, yeah, that's that's a mafia yeah. <laughs> use technique. Uh, tried and true. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of organized crimes use pig farms. Yeah. But, yeah, either way, pigs are assholes. Let's Agreed. just, let's just stick to that. So, um, the matter was taken to the local justice of the peace, who was Anderson Preacher Ants Hatfield. Another ants. Yeah, I was like, is what ants short for mean? something? I was like, I could see ants being short for Anderson, but not William. Yeah. But whatever. Okay, so he ruled for the Hatfields by testimony of Bill Staten, who was a relative of both families. And, you know, he was also a Hatfield, so... Mm-hmm. In June 1880, Staten was killed by two McCoy brothers, Sam and Paris, who were later acquitted on grounds of self-defense. Because holy shit, y'all can't stop killing each other. Apparently. And now, it doesn't say that it was directly related to the hog, but you never know. Maybe they maybe they yeah. hold a grudge. Well, clearly they Clear, do well, hold a grudge. Yes, they hold a <laughs> hundred year long grudge, but this one was not particularly about a pig that we know of. Yeah. It's just like once you're on their bad list, then you're fucked forever. You're fucked forever. Okay, so the feud escalated even further. After Rosanna McCoy entered a relationship with Devil Ants' son, Johnson, known as Johns, leaving her family to live with the Hatfields in West Virginia. It's like a real Romeo and Juliet. Except for Romeo was a dick. Really? Yeah. I said, scandalous. (laughs) Rosanna eventually returned to the McCoys, but when the couple tried to resume their relationship, Johns was arrested by the McCoys on an outstanding Kentucky bootlegging warrant because fuck they were allowing this shit again I don't know they're like fuck that you're not going back to him we just got you back you're not going back into Hatfield territory no so 
He was freed from McCoy custody only when Rosanna made a desperate midnight ride to alert Ants, trying to save her mans. She basically went to Ants and went, hey, they're going to kill him. Get him. Yeah. And so he organized a rescue party. The Hatfield party surrounded the McCoys and they took Johns back to West Virginia before he could be transported next day to the county seat in Pikeville, Kentucky. So before he could be brought up on these bootlegging charges, Mm -hmm. they got him back. Um, despite that, what was seen as a betrayal of her own family on his behalf, Johns thereafter abandoned the pr- the pregnant Rosanna for her cousin Nancy McCoy, whom he married in 1881. Because fuck that guy. What? So she betrayed her family. Yeah. And got him free, saved his ass. For, you know, love. Love. And the father of her child, The father of her child. And he just dropped her pregnant ass for her cousin. So, not somebody that a McCoy would accept because, you know, she was a Hatfield or whatever. No. No, or he was a Hatfield. No, he went for Nancy McCoy. Basically like, oh, well, I'm going to marry this one instead of you. See, now that seems like a good reason to hold a grudge. Yeah, so fuck that guy. (laughs) And according to a romanticized version of the legend, Rosanna was heartbroken by these events and never recovered emotionally. Because why would you? Yeah. I would personally grab one of my daddy's shotguns, because apparently they're just everywhere, and been like, bitch, you thought you was leaving. So, okay. I don't want to get on too much of a soapbox. Apparently, that's my theme of the day. (laughs) Um, Just wait till we get to my episode. I'm leaving all the soapboxes lie (laughs) so I don't get up on them. But why is it romantic that she was so emotionally traumatized that she couldn't heal? Well, let's just talk about how shitty that is. Well, I know, but you know the romanticized stories were like, and she never loved again because he was her one true love. These are fucking bullshit and it's never really good for the people involved exactly um like it's fairy tale bullshit exactly let's just examine the fact that our fairy tales are toxic but we've already done that we do that let's just keep going keeping on okay so rosanna pregnant heartbroken fuck him and the sad thing is i can't find out what happened to her or her child for real? I, like, I was looking to see if there was anything specifically, like, did she get kicked out of the family? Was she welcomed back? What happened to that baby? I couldn't find it. Rude. So, records suck. Well, that's not, that's not surprising. So, hopefully, she found herself a man's that loved her, or a woman's, I don't care, somebody, and she got the hell out. Or maybe she found gold in her bathroom and she got the fuck out. And she and her baby were living some great <laughs> Beverly Hills hillbilly life. In California in the 1800s. I, I wish that for her. but I, I We can just make we, it up. We're making it up. That's my romanticized version. Right? That's she a don't need version. no man. <laughs> she found gold in her outhouse. Which, ew. <laughs> Your face just, but... that was great. It was like you were just as shocked as anybody about what you just said. Well, because I was like in the bathroom. But wait, they didn't have a bathroom. It would have been an outhouse. Oh, ew. <laughs> Maybe somebody dropped it on the floor and not in the the outhouse. Either way, my romanticized version is she finds gold and she lives her life with her baby, happy, healthy, safe, and farther away from these fuckers. Maybe for the sake of romance, let's just omit the outhouse altogether. Gold was found (laughs) somewhere. And she and this baby got the fuck out of Dodge and are happy and healthy somewhere else. Because that's what we choose to believe. That is my romanticized version. I accept fuck it. Fuck that heartbreak. Also, she kicked the dude in the nuts on the way out. Because he deserved it. Absolutely. All right. And probably punched her cousin. Because she deserved it. Yes. Yeah. Let's okay. Move, let's move Moving on. Moving on. The feud continued in 1882. Why? Tell me. Probably because somebody died. Somebody died. Somebody died, okay. When Ellison Hatfield, brother of Ants, was killed by three of Rosanna's younger brothers. Hmm. Tolbert, Farmer, and Bud. I don't know if it was in revenge, because it was Ellison Hatfield, not Jaunt's. Uh Uh-huh. But basically, they done killed him. Cool. On an election day in Kentucky, the three McCoy brothers fought a drunken Ellison and his other brother. Ellison was stabbed 26 times Holy. and finished off with a gunshot. Wow. Overkill much? Right? You know, maybe he just kept coming. Maybe he was like one of those, like, 
drunken bears that like you stab it and it keeps coming and like you shoot it and 